Welcome to Dyson's Real Program. My name is Nilao. So this is episode 40 of our Let's Play campaign. So in the previous episode, we were focused on launching rockets for for the new Dyson Sphere. And uh, I said that there was one more little project that I had sort of uh, hidden. And uh, I've been hinting at it a few times. And uh, just no one has caught on to it. So it's, it's kind of funny because um, you are excellent at noticing a single belt turned the wrong way. But apparently something as discreet as what I want to show you is uh, actually something that eluded you completely. There's nothing wrong with it. It's uh, it's fine. I just wanted to make it like a little challenge. Oh, by the way, we are now on Acellus Primus 2. And, um, you know, you need a hell of a lot of nanotubes to uh, <laughs> to keep to keep the rocket production going. So this is our expanded nanotube production facility. And no reason to put that on camera, but uh, that was... Uh, that's that's kind of, oh uh, by the way there's more i have no idea how much it is it is absolutely insane how much uh, you want nanotubes so i think that actually if we really when it really comes down to it in a very late 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 game i i think the best the best uh, rare resource is actually the spiny foam stalagmite crystal because the alternative is incomprehensible and also like even though i have so many i am still consuming all of it they're, they're still not stockpiled. Uh, some of them are stockpiled. So that's actually something. No, anyway, super secret project. Here we go. Uh, for the people who've been watching on stream, they will probably know it already. So this is the reason why I started here is because now we can look at the entire uh, galaxy and uh, just get a sense of what it is here. And if we just look at some of the, the key points, I'm just going to tap here. So we have the, we're starting with uh, Kappa Sagittari, our, star, our home world. And we went to Iota Corvi. This is where we found our first uh, uh, crystal, the, the, what is it called? Actually, what is it actually called? Uh, it's this one. That one. Optical grading crystal. That's one of the first rare resources we found. Uh, we get went to anchor. This is where we built our subscribe uh, uh, sphere. That was awesome. And big facility. The algal system is uh, where we find our organic crystals and are building a lot of things there. Kappa hydri is where we got the oil. And uh, Gidi Prime is where we have our science. Uh, Alfrica, that's where I've set up a massive smelt, uh, not it's smelting, a massive uh, iron mining operation. So that's coming in there. But there is something weird here, right? What is a uh, diadem is also, that's the when we, that's the, I can't remember what I have there. And then some of the ones that like Leonis Minoris, they is just for, uh, for the deuterium. But there's something that stands out here. This is by, by the way, also a Celtus Primus is also super busy. There's something that stands out. Like, what is the busiest system in this entire system? It's that one, the Alnitak system. And I haven't mentioned it at all. I have not talked about it. I have not done anything. So what could it be? The busiest planet in the, uh, or the busiest system in the entire, in the entire galaxy. And we've never even visited it. We've never even seen it. We've never even done anything. That must be an interesting secret facility hidden at the corner of the galaxy. Let's have a look at it and just see what it is. We are now coming up on the Alnitak system and I'm actually going to go out of uh, orbit at a larger distance. You can see this is the amount of vessels coming in here. Uh, this is absolutely insane, the amount of vessels coming in. And this is my super secret project. Can you start seeing what it is when we go in? So one of the things that I've seen <clears throat> other content creators state is like, oh, Forge World. Yeah, you know what? If your Forge World doesn't look like this, it's not really a Forge World. This is a Forge World. This this is, um, yeah. So <laughs> what happened was that I, I got a bit annoyed that I couldn't figure out where I was building things. So I was like, you know what? I really should just have one planet that does all my smelting for me. And so I started building it. And basically I've been watching a bit of League of Legends. I've been waiting for my videos to process. And while doing that, I thought, why not uh, just have something on the other screen to, uh, to, to have some fun with. And uh, that's been doing this one. That's also why that uh, when, whenever someone's been suggesting, oh, I think you're running out of iron or copper or something like that. I have a very easy way to look at it because I can just check this planet. This planet is 
processing a lot of materials, like a lot, a lot. So it, it is consuming 12,400 materials every second, every second. Yes, that is per second. We can uh, <laughs> 12,000 per second. That's also because we have 12,400 smelters on this planet. And the, the way they I have divided it, I'll just explain it. And I'll also just let you know sort of the reason why this is so this is so good for a number of reasons. First of all, you never need to bother with where are you building stuff because the end, where you're smelling stuff, the answer is here. The second thing is uh, you can easily check if things are running out. So, well, you check here. Third, third thing is it's very easy to build. It's going to be easier once there are blueprint mods uh, Well, or blueprints are integrated. Well, there is a blueprint mod. I haven't tested it. I want to test it. But uh, you can see that uh, this one is built without blueprints. And yeah, that's pretty insane. But, you know, it's all in a day's work. Well, actually, a bit more than one day's work. And uh, yeah, so this is, it just means that when you start building something, you just don't have to worry about this. This is just, I know, I know I'll have enough iron. If I have enough iron mines, then I know I'll have enough iron. That's just going to be fine. You don't have to build it this way. I can explain how it's built because, uh, Let's actually start from the middle. That's where it's most beneficial. I didn't bother doing this part because it's um, I can't have that many smelters. But the logistics setup. OK, so this is the equator and we have the first section here. If you uh, refer to my if you've watched my planetary sectors tutorial, then it makes perfect sense. We have this section going up to here and uh, you can you can build this. This is exactly two. Uh, well, one tenth of the planet circumference this section here. So there are 10 segments around the equator, around the planet. Each section is or the way that I have split it is I have two iron, I have two copper, I have one silicon, one magnet, one stone brick, one steel, one titanium and one graphite. No glass. Uh, and I don't feel like glass was particularly important. That's the only thing I was like contemplating whether I wanted. Um, this also means that, for example, because I have graphite, I am much more inclined to use coal for graphite instead of oil, even though oil is infinite. Yeah, but <clears throat> at the at the current moment, I cannot say anything except that uh, oil, uh, everything is infinite. I'm using less than 10% resources, so it's every resource is pretty much infinite at this point. So the way I'm, I'm structuring it is because in, in the middle sections of the planet, you can see that I can make lines if I be very careful. I'm going to go over here. So if you want to copy this pattern, then uh, you can. This is one of the meridians. And then I basically I have two different patterns, uh, three different patterns that I use. This is the one for the one to one smelters like uh, iron, copper, magnet, stone brick. Those are the one to one. It goes by the mean is that uh, the recipe is one in one out one per, per second. Easy peasy. And then I build it like this. It's very simple. The advantage of having it like this is that I can copy this one here. It's the same pattern. This one goes in, in, in from one side, out the other side, in one side, out the other side. And then I can exactly, if I build it close enough here, which is just inside, if this is on the line, you can see the green line here, then the other one is sort of just balancing on the line. So it could probably be one closer, but that would look awful. So that is honestly close enough. And then if I look at the other side, how close it gets to the other side, you can see here, it gets really close, but not sort of criminally close. I don't know, criminally close is a weirder expression here. And usually I would put a power pole here behind. I think right now I've built it here. This is built over many, many sessions. So uh, that's it. So what you have here is, 30 this one segment here is 120 in 120 out and we're talking per second of course that means this section uh, the planetary sector between the equator here and the next uh, the first fault line is 360 and then we get into the next line the one that is 10 squares wide i can have two sections two sections here they can't be entirely 30 long uh, but they can be 24. So this is a total of 192. And then the last one I bothered with because then it gets kind of small here. Then this one is, uh, is 17, so that's uh, 68. 
So if we add it together, I have on the north side of the equator, I have 620. That means overall uh, for each section here, I have 1,240. Uh, 1, and then that means the entire thing is because there are 10 segments, there are 12,040, 12,400 smelters on this planet. And that gives us also 12,400 12, materials consumed per second. I was going through the patterns. That was the first pattern. It's also the same pattern for copper. Then we have this, the the, uh, the second one. This is for two in, one out. Here, also on a two in, one out. That goes for silicon. It goes for titanium, and it goes for graphite. Those are the ones using this this pattern. Very simple. I am going to take again. I want this to be as symmetric as possible. So we are. Yeah, something has been, uh, this is probably one of the last ones I built. So, uh, or maybe it's just because we are consuming lots and lots of titanium. Oh, see, that one should have, they really should be uh, higher fueling here. Ah, that's why, there we go. Yeah, that's something I I think that, I also got good comments some time ago on, uh, on, on YouTube about just always set it to maximum and I was like no no hold on that's actually a good idea because it's going to use excess uh, power in your network so just set it to maximum in the later game anyway this the pattern here is that I get two outbounds one here one out and I'm going to leave this one in the middle empty just purely for aesthetic reasons you can not do that if you like and then one in so that's the second pattern and the last pattern is of course only available for or only relevant for steel because that's the only one that's a composite material that I have here. We could also start going, um, yeah, so the reason why I, for example, well, there are several reasons why I don't have the other composite materials and by that I mean the ones that take something in like um, silicon crystal or diamonds. I don't have those because in the late game, and this is going to be for the late game, you would have these created by your uh, by the alternate recipe because it's so much more efficient. I think so, at least. I think it's more. Yeah, it is it is way more efficient. So you would create those by the uh, by the rare recipes uh, instead, and they are much simpler. So the only one that you need is steel, and that's uh, also like a pretty simple pattern. The one thing though about this is that, uh, yeah, here this build is very big. And the problem with this build is that I can't actually, this is the one, I can't use my, uh, use the satellite substations for. So I have to use the small power poles for this to make it because the small power poles can fit in here. They won't be fitting in, in on the, any of the other ones. Uh, if you look at over here, take one of these ordinary ones. It doesn't fit in here. So I have to use the substations. Now, the way it operates this one, I think that's the most important thing to show, is that what I've done is, well, I said local demand and global de remote demand because in the beginning I actually had a bit of uh, stone production as well. The first thing I set up was stone and steel production because then I could start having concrete produced on this planet immediately. This planet actually has some, or at least had, they had has some stone and some, well, did have some iron. So well, the first thing I wanted to do was start a production of of concrete and I still have a bit of residual concrete I just uh, moved moved the pro removed the production but have uh, taken all the stuff that I built and just made it available to the network and as you can see here each one of these is con is containing uh 60,000 and what do we have 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 7 14 28 okay I'm just 28 times 60,000. Yeah, there's 1.7 million, 1.6 million, 6.68 plus there's 10,000 in here. So it's 1.7 million concrete I have ready and waiting, which would be, hmm. Is that one divided by 326,000? That is more than five planets that I can completely pave with the concrete I have available here. So yeah. I'm never going to run out of concrete. <laughs> I can't imagine. But what if you want to pave more than five planets? Yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, this is uh, the way it works, as I was uh, getting to, is actually here. I am going to 
request things in, not by the logistics drone. Uh, you don't actually have to have logistics drones here. You just need to have the logistics vessels. The really, really strong part about this is also the fact that I have, see another one, two, three, four, five, six, 12. That means there are 12 locations that can add simultaneously provide and they can provide with somewhere between not so much and 120 per second. These ones, this one here provides at 120 per second. That means if I had built something and I start requesting iron, maybe you noticed in some of the other builds where I've requested iron, copper, steel, stone, magnets, I can just request it and I know confidently that I am I'm being able to, for example, if I want iron, I can draw iron out at a rate of 1,240 per second continuously. And that includes also from, and I can have a total of what 120 vessels coming inbound at any given time. So I'm never really going to be in, in trouble when it comes to the actual, uh, the actual demand anywhere. So my recommendation for a, a, my next playthrough, I'm probably going to take my second planet or maybe my third planet and just go like, that's the one. This is going to be my smelting planet. And then from there on, all smelting is going to be at that location. No exception. Because it's so much easier to manage. And it means that I don't have to worry about anything about this anywhere else in the world. And uh, yeah, power-wise, it's kind of hungry. Not surprising. Especially if all is working. So I have now set it up to 6 gigawatts. And if the whole thing is operational, I'm not actually sure that's enough. Uh, actually, couldn't we figure that out? Couldn't I think we could. It doesn't seem like much. Uh, the main part of the consumption is actually not from this one. Times, these are only, now nah, it can't be 12 megawatts. This must be more. Now 360, so if they're, if they're all working, uh, that would be 4.5 gigawatt of power for all of these, plus something for the charging. So I think six gigawatts of energy is probably good enough because there's no way they'll ever all be working. This is right now building, if we look at the production, for example, here, uh, it's actually dropping a bit on, we're having a lot of, of carry rockets being produced. That's the main part that we're producing also. Uh, still a lot of solar sails as well. So we're um, we're definitely producing a lot uh, in in our base still. So that's uh, that's basically that my my main goal of just showing you how this works, how it is, and uh, just look at how many rockets are at any given moment, how many vessels are at any given moment either taking off or landing in this place. I just wanted to have a dedicated location, a dedicated one for this one. Uh, I'm not going to be building anything on this one because, well, it's it's already done. I wanted to show you when it's done, not when it's uh, in progress. The one thing that I still have missing to show you as the final thing of this one is some kind of uh, time lapse of the uh, of the black hole black holes. Dyson Sphere that we are currently building and uh, that's going to be out in the final video of the series. So I hope you want to join in that. It's going to take some time for me to process because I'm going to have to find four hours of uh, time when I can just set up a recording and then do a time lapse and music and all that crap and it's probably going to take a while. But at this point I feel that I have achieved everything I wanted to do in this series. I have 30 signs per second. I have a gigantic uh, a black hole, uh, a gigantic the biggest Dyson Sphere you can build, and I have products, projects like this, uh, giant, yeah, uh, Forge World. Yeah, this is definitely, if, so if anyone says they're building a Forge World, you, they have to have more than 10,000 smelters. Otherwise, it's not a Forge World, right? That's our definition. At least 10,000 smelters. Otherwise, you can't call it Forge World. That's the standard. I'm going to be wrapping up here. I hope you have enjoyed this little bit more of a showcase episode than actually a construction episode. I'll be uh, uh, still releasing tutorials. I have a tutorial being, I'm working on for the, how to set up the license sphere. And if you have more things, then uh, let me know. But otherwise, I'm going to be focusing more on Satisfactory and Evil Genius uh, in the coming uh, weeks and months until there's more content. And then I'll be coming back to, to Dyson Sphere program for sure. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next episode or in the tutorial or anything else or on the live streams. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Take care and stay effective.